I got a TV recently and instead of buying a new wall mount for it I just printed an adapter so this smaller TV could fit on the bracket that I already had for a bigger TV. All I had to do was remove this big rail and then print a piece of plastic with a few holes in it. This saved me a bit of money and I would say that it saved me time too but I spent a while designing and printing the bracket so honestly it might have been a bit quicker to have just bought a new bracket but that definitely would have been more expensive. After mounting my TV with a brand new invention it got me thinking about what else I could print for my TV and considering I lost the remote for my last TV somehow instantly it only made sense that I make something that I can keep my remote safely stored away in and just like that my newest project had begun to design my own TV remote holder. Before I begin though, there's a couple things I wanted out of my holder. Number one, I wanted to mount it to my wardrobe right by the side of my bed for quick access while I'm laying in bed, where I do most of my watching. Number two, I wanted to be able to simply push the remote into the holder with one hand and have it stay in place, and at this point in time, it was here where the complexity lied, because like most scenarios in my life, I had no idea how to do this. But it couldn't be that hard, right? I watched a few videos on the 3D printed springs that you can make and originally wanted to incorporate this detail into my design, but ultimately thought that it was a bit too over engineered for such a simple task and ended up going for a simpler solution. And yes, it's because I'm too lazy to engineer something, let alone over engineer something. So the plan here was to create a bracket with flexing grips in a shape that when pressed into would provide enough of a squeezing force to hold the remote in place. And as you can see, it's flawless. So clearly there's a problem with this design, but that's the beauty of having a 3D printer, right? You can prototype and try it again and again and again. But you see, that's actually the problem because it enables me to just fail repeatedly. Just like version two here. For this iteration, I simply reduced the distance between the clamps on either side, hoping that it would squeeze the remote tighter. But because this remote is so curved, it never actually wanted to sit parallel on the holder like I designed it to do so. Now in technicality, this version actually worked if you precisely set the remote in a certain position. But as I'm sure you can imagine, this isn't exactly what I had in mind. So back to the drawing board I go. This one actually works kind of. I lowered the height of the jaws hoping this would make a difference but ultimately it didn't. That was until I decided to put the remote in the other way around and due to the friction between the rubber buttons the remote actually stays in place. And since at this point I was so fed up of waiting to print new pieces I just ran with it, drilled the holes in the wardrobe and then mounted it. And of course I didn't drill the holes level, I work in a perfect world of capped not the real world. Did you really expect me to do it right? Of course not. In actuality, I think the slight lean helps keep the remote in place since it generates a little bit more friction between the remote and the holder. This was intentional, of course. And that was that. I started using the design for the next two weeks. Two weeks later. So at this point, I've been using it for a while and without a doubt it worked. Just with a few problems like the fact that the remote was the wrong way around compared to what I had originally planned. So it presses the buttons down instantly, turning my TV on and off. To get around this, I just started lowering it in from the top and it was fine until I started to notice little scratches forming on the remote where it's been gliding over the screws I mounted the bracket with. So maybe it's time I take a little bit of a different approach. After all these complicated failures, I stepped back and I realized I was overthinking it. Instead of a locking mechanism, I focused on a but flexible fit, no damage, no frustration, just a simple effective design. Even so, I still think there's a problem here. When the remote is placed, there's a little too much movement and I can see it falling out if I don't carefully place it. On top of that, because the holes that I've already drilled aren't level, I thought I'd amend the hole position so that when the new holder is installed, it's a little closer to being level. But I'm guessing I was drunk or something while I designed this because rather than lowering the hole on the right, I raised it, which quite literally just magnified my problem. So this design is similar to the last XS it has these walls that come up either side blocking the remote from leaning over the edges. I also amended the fixing holes so that the holder is closer to the level while still using the original skewed holes that I had drilled. Given the shape of the bottom of the remote I also added an angle to the bottom of the pocket so that the remote fits a little bit more snugly and this should aid in stopping the remote from toppling forward and out of the mount and onto my face. In conclusion this whole process taught me something important simpler is often better. If you can imagine how it will work in your head, then there's likely less points where you could make a mistake in the design. If you enjoyed watching me overcomplicate something that should have been simple, why not subscribe? It makes me feel like I'm actually doing something with my life, even if I'm not.